Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. You know, all of us were beginners at some point in our real estate journey. And if you're just starting out, then today's highlights episodes are just for you. So 16, you wanted to be a rock star. That didn't work out so well. But by 28, uh, you were a millionaire and all in, all in real estate, just like you had read in Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I made, I made a lot of money um, buying, fixing, and selling properties. And then I also, I also have a portfolio of, of holding properties. And um, between the two, you know, that's, that made me the, the millionaire. Now, here's the thing. Millionaire these days doesn't do much for you. I'll say that. You know, you're middle class if you're a millionaire. You own a couple properties, you own a car, a big deal, you can go on some vacations. It's not like a millionaire in 1960 or a millionaire in 1920. You know, when Henry Ford was a billionaire, a millionaire was a lot of things. I was like 10 or 20 or 30 million nowadays. So it's, um, it's a milestone. It's cool. Um, I, don't think it's, I don't think it really changed your life. But you know, when you're a millionaire, it certainly takes away the want and the need for money. I can go buy what I want when I want. I can have whatever I want for dinner. I'm down here in Indianapolis today hanging out with one of my friends who does, uh, I think, 400 to 500 real estate deals a year. And I can just do that. You know, I was in Vegas on the weekend. I was in LA last week. I was in Ottawa, Canada. I was in Vancouver for two weeks. I can do that because guess what? I have the financial capacity to do that. So there's a certain amount of freedom you get with being a millionaire. But, you know, does it, does it get you a private jet these days? No, it's more like maybe a... 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 millionaire gets the jet. You know, you're still flying commercial if you're a millionaire. So what is it in real estate that you're strictly focused on now? I know you did some flipping, some things like that to get to that million, uh, but did it stay flipping? Did you, what did you move into? So there's three things that I'm very good at. One is buying at 40, 60 cents on the dollar. So very, very good at buying distressed assets. Uh, second thing is raising capital very good at raising capital. I came from the private equity world. So I learned to raise money for big deals. And then the third thing is personal branding. So for a long time, it was flipping, flipping, flipping. Uh, the last little bit, it's been the buy, fix, refinance, hold. And now I'm debating as to whether I should go into turnkey and start selling turnkey, or should I just go into like a private equity kind of fund? And I'm leaning towards a private equity because I'm a busy guy. I've got a lot of media. I have a coaching company. I'm always flying around, moving around. I can buy ads, buy media. And I think a private equity is probably going to be what's going to be on my back end. Like my, my partner and I, we were looking at a $7.7 .7 million 30 unit building and uh, we got the money for it. Boom. Like right away, we know how to raise money. My partner's a student of mine. We know how to do that. It's just a matter of, okay, how do you organize this into a fund? So I, I feel like that's going to be the next thing for me is some sort of fun because I am very good at raising money, very good at selling, very good at marketing and building a brand. As far as like bricks and sticks and dirt, man, I, I hate construction. I hate tenants. <laughs> I don't like doing all the boots on the ground and the dirty stuff. I've done that. You know, I've flipped a house with 129 cats in it, flipped houses with dead people in them. I've had burned down houses. I've had two houses burned down on me. I'm, I'm just ready for something clean, I think. No, that's why we love the syndication business because we don't want to manage tenants personally on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so, yeah, no, that's awesome. And, exactly. you know, I, I'd love to hear more about, uh, you know, maybe you give us a couple tips on, on, you know, your best tips on raising capital or getting started. I know there's like so many listeners who are wanting to get started in this business and they're trying to do it by raising capital. Maybe you could just shed some light. Yeah. So the most important thing I think for raising capital is to educate your clients. And I used to work for a company, we raised like $135 million in some, a few years. And the business model was simple, educate the market more than anyone else. So we gave out more free education than anybody else. And because we gave out more free education, we ended up with more money. And when I got into business for myself, I started blogging. So I started blogging every day. I was writing articles every day about something I learned. And after 120 days or so of blogging every day, I had speaking engagements. I had a book. I took 35 of the blogs and made it in my first book called Money People Deal. You can go to that moneypeopledeal.com. And uh, Money People Deal, that book raised $5 million of capital for me in a year. So I took a little $3,000 how to make a book course. I spent 2000 bucks on production and I went and raised $5 bucks. And with that money, 
I wasn't the smartest guy back then. I just flipped and flipped and flipped. I should have like bought a $20 million building. Like if I, if I was a smarter guy, I would have done that. But I was out flipping houses and I wanted to make 10 grand and 30 grand and 20 grand. I was just small minded. So that's what I was doing. Um, you know, making 30, 40 grand a month, which is a good paycheck for a kid who's 26, you know, but with that, you know, the, the key in that story is it's the education platform that allows you to raise capital because lots of people have money. There's millions and millions of dollars everywhere, every day looking for a home, looking for somebody to take those dollars and grow them, but they don't know who or how or what. So if you're providing some of the education and making it easy for them to come and give you money, hey, that's awesome. So that's what my first book, Money People Deal, did. And, you know, from there, it was just a rocket ride. Get your free copy of A Guide to Passively Investing in Commercial Real Estate. Inside, you'll learn the basics of passive income and real estate syndication, what kind of returns you can expect, how to find a sponsor, and how to evaluate the risks. Download your copy in the show notes or visit lifebridgecapital.com forward slash invest better to start your investment journey. Chris, thank you so much for your time being on the show. I've enjoyed our, our conversation just before we even got started as well. And, uh, but, but give the listeners a little more about you and, and let's, let's get right into how you got started. Sure. Uh, yeah, so basically I was working for a college, uh, working for Franklin and Marshall College, um, and I'd always, I'd always had a passion for being able to find, I would buy things. So like there was, the, I had my own Lego business, uh, buying used Legos um, and reselling them to people who wanted to buy Legos. So I'd buy low, sell high. And there was always, I always had a passion to find things, buy low, sell high, and in, in negotiating the deal. And I started thinking about what, um, what's something that I could buy low and sell high and probably make the most money at and have the most flexibility of my time. And I fell into real estate. Um, so I, I commissioned myself to start learning real estate and I was the lowest man on the totem pole in the, with the crew that I was on in the college. So I sat in the back of a box truck for the better part of 10 years uh, as we went from work order to work order. And if there weren't any work orders, I sat back there doing nothing all day. Um, and so I basically learned real estate in the back of that box truck, uh, everything I could from, you know, wholesaling to flipping to syndication, um, anything that I could saturate myself with to learn real estate. I did that for four years in the back of the box truck. And then I started negotiating deals in the back of that box truck, um, which was not always fun. I mean, we negotiated by the time I was reaching the end of my career with Franklin Marshall, I was negotiating million dollar deals in the back of a box truck. And I remember my, my, uh, the people I worked with would just kind of look in the back of the box truck as I'm back, back there negotiating. Um, I just have this look of what in the world am I doing back there? Um, but I did that. Uh, I, I did that, I think for about four years at Franklin and Marshall. And then I worked myself out of a job. Um, it's basically how that happened. It was just constant deal negotiation, um, in the back of the box truck. And then I had a business partner who I kind of signed on with, who is Dan Gottwald. I think he might be on your show at a later date. Um, but he, we had complimenting problems. See, I was able to find deal flow, but I literally was only making about $30,000 a year. So I had no money. Okay. And Dan, my business partner was, he was, he was great. He is a people person. 100%. He had raised, I think he had raised, well, I know he had $300,000 just on a handshake. I mean, I, he had $300,000 just sitting there on a handshake that he had to place and so we had complementing problems. I had uh, a few deals under contract with no way to finance them. And he had $300,000 and the rest is history. I mean, we kind of formed a partnership, firm foundations, like you had said, was our original LLC, uh, came together. And uh, the first deal went great. Uh, it was a couple flip properties. And then from there, we just kept growing. Wow. So I, I wanted to back up just a little bit, uh, you know, in the back of that box truck, you know, I mean, <laughs> you, you just used your time wisely, right? I mean, you, you started educating yourself. You had some downtime, right. you were getting paid during that time, you know, but, yep. and, and so you are, you're, you know, you're using that time. And, and so tell me, how was the best way that you educated yourself during that time? Uh, podcasts, YouTube videos. Uh, I'm sure I ran across your podcast, Whitney, at some point or fashion. Uh, I was listening to everything Everything that I could listen to, I was listening to back there. So podcasts, YouTube videos, I was reading books. Obviously, Rich Dad, Poor Dad was an amazing foundational book that, you know, not 
not much nuts and bolts, but it was definitely something that kind of got you motivated that I'm sure everybody's talked about on this show. Um, you know, Millionaire Real Estate Investor by Gary Keller was another big one. Uh, those are the books, I, but, but essentially podcasts, to be honest with you, that really got me uh, kind of going and propelling me forward. Yep. Yeah, Millionaire Real Estate Investor, obviously Rich Dad Poor Dad, I've heard them numerous times. Right. And uh, yeah, the, the Millionaire Real Estate Investor, I, I need to get that myself. <laughs> I have not read that one yet. It's a great book. But, that, uh, that, was, that definitely was more nuts and bolts. Once you read that, it gives you more of the information you're seeking if you're into nuts and bolts. It's not nice. just theoretical. Yep. So I wanted to ask you about this partnership as well. And, mm -hmm. and you know, a partnership is something that, uh, you know, I've seen done wrong so many times. I've done it wrong, you know, and, and uh, you know, and I feel like I've done it better recently, uh, you know, a lot better. And, but, it, but it come from, you know, some learning some things the hard way. And, yes. and so, you know, to elaborate, I guess, on, you know, how you all knew, I know you said you all had complimentary skills, which is, which right. is great, you know, mm -hmm. but, but how did you know that, okay, you know, this is, cause it's, it's like a marriage. I mean, right. hundred I mean, percent. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it is, uh, you know, it's like a marriage and, mm -hmm. and so, you know, how, how did you know, okay, this is, this is what we need to do. And then I'd love for us to elaborate on just really how that propelled you forward. Correct. So Dan Gottwald, who is my business partner, he was, uh, my brother's best friend growing up. So I actually knew him. He went to the same school. Um, so I, you know, it's not like I just met this guy and I didn't have any, um, idea of who he was. I knew who he was. Uh, so I knew his character. Um, it's very important to know whoever you're going into business with, you have to know their character and also the stars got to align their, their same life goals need to be aligned. And I think that's uh, huge. Dan has five children. I have three children, all young kids. Uh, family is the most important to us. So that, that aligns perfectly. You don't have somebody who's driving hard to get all of this work done. You don't know our goals are the same. So, you're absolutely right. It is a marriage. Uh, there is no, I've seen, even in the short time we've been part, I think we've been partners five years, well, since 2012, whatever that is. Um, we've seen so many partnerships that were good partnerships just, just kind of collapse um, and implode. And uh, the biggest, if you go into it knowing that it's a marriage and it's sort of like that, it's similar to marriage. I mean, you can go into a marriage and it could be perfect, but there's always going to be a time when you get to that point where it's, you know what, I got to sacrifice here. There's a, there's a sacrifice that's made uh, to keep things successful. And with our partnership, that's what it is. It's us knowing our strong suits, but knowing that we're in it for the long haul. We're together. Like we're together. When we're together, we're better. And that's what it is. And um, if it wasn't for Dan, I'll, I'll say this to him because I'm sure he's going to listen to this. Uh, if it wasn't for him, I would not be where I am today. And that's a success, successful partnership. It's, it's what do they bring? If, if you're better together, then you got to do whatever it takes to stay together and keep pushing forward. Today, our guest is Sam Russ. Thanks for being on the show, Sam. Yeah, excited to be here. Thanks, Whitney. So I, I met Sam in Denver a few weeks back and, and was very impressed with what he's accomplished in, in a very short amount of time and, and just his ability to get these things done um, and in starting in the syndication business and, and having some, uh, some success and doing really well. And so I knew he'd be a great guest and could really relate to uh, a lot of the listeners. And so, but Sam grew up on an Idaho, in Idaho on a farm and as the oldest of eight, uh, learn the value of hard work stacking over 200 tons of hay per summer. That's a lot of hay. I've stacked a lot of hay in my time, and that, and that's that sounds like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely uh, kept us out of trouble in Idaho summers. So, you know, he, he, he learned the, the value of learning. He graduated college at the age of 17, which is also extremely impressive. Uh, married to his wife, Becca, in, uh, in uh, 2012, now has four daughters. Congratulations. And uh, he started investing in real estate in 2017 and quickly moved to syndication and, and uh, the managing partner of 65 units. So, Sam, you know, thanks again for your time and being on the show. And, uh, you know, I just feel like you can really relate to uh, the listeners and where you're at in your process right now of, of the syndication business. And, uh, but give the listeners a little more about your background and, and what you're doing right now in real estate. Yeah, I started, uh, as you just mentioned in my bio back in 2017, um, like most people, uh, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad and had a little bit of an epiphany um, and, and really changed my mind specifically on how it relates to debt and using debt to get ahead. Uh, really have uh, been influenced a lot by Dave Ramsey growing up. 
Um, and I think Dave Ramsey does an excellent job of teaching people how to be an adult with money. I think that that's really important. Uh, no matter what you're trying to do, um, to be a good steward with your money is the, the number one thing. But then after that, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad opened my eyes to what's possible looking at assets, things like that. Um, and so I just started diving in and doing a ton of research, um, reading a bunch of books, uh, listening to a ton of podcasts. Um, with my background, um, I, my parents instilled in me a love of learning. I think that's the, the most important gift they gave me. Um, and so I really enjoyed the process of researching all these different areas in real estate um, that people can and have been very successful in. Um, but as I journeyed down that road, um, really started appreciating the scale that comes from multifamily syndication. Uh, the business model made sense to me. Um, and I felt like there was a, a lot of large demographic reasons to start looking at that space. Um, as housing continues to get more expensive, people are always going to need somewhere to live. Um, and if you can make that jump and scale uh, relatively quickly, uh, I think that there's a lot of benefits that come with that. And, and an interesting I guess, side note that I noticed as I was listening to all these podcasts was whenever someone would have a syndicator on, the, they would ask them, you know, what, what do you wish you had done sooner? Or what do you wish that uh, you had done a little bit differently? And I said, I wish I'd skipped single family fix and flipping or whatever it was and gone straight to syndication. Um, it, I just found that to be a pattern that repeated over and over. Um, and by this time, kind of the fall of 2017, I had bought a single family house to basically house hack um, with some student housing. And, uh, man, I read that and then, uh, I listened to that and then read Grant Cardone's book, the 10 X rule, uh, that really convicted me of the need for massive action. So I said, you know what, in 2018, we're going to buy an apartment complex, Lord willing. Um, and you know, we've, we started the process, started building foundation. And, uh, by the end of 2018, we had a 64 unit apartment complex. Wow. So, you know, when you and I met, I was just impressed that, uh, that you were, you jumped right into syndication and, and like you, I've heard time and time again, even on, on this show that people say, you know, I wish I had, uh, you know, I skipped the 10 years of fixing and flipping that other job that I created, you know, and just got into syndication a lot faster or a lot sooner, you know, sooner. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, I can relate to that, but you know, I know, uh, so, you know, I, I know part of your background and, and I know, you know, you're, you know, a successful family business that you're a part of. And then, uh, uh, you know, all of a, and then all of a sudden you're, you know, you're looking at real estate. So when, when did you say, okay, you know, I, I want to start educating myself about real estate. Uh, you know, even though, you know, I mean, you have a great, career going, you know, but then you still want to look into real estate. When did that happen? I know you said rich dad, poor dad, some of that kind of opened your eyes, but you know, when in this process? Yeah, I think uh, my wife and I, as we've been looking towards the future, trying to define how we can be the best stewards of what we've been given, both in, in time and in money. Um, and early in 2018, so before we had uh, landed on an apartment complex, when we were just beginning to research syndication, uh, we were really searching for our why. Uh, you know, and I think that that's really important. Uh, you have to have a big enough why. Um, and we're still working on defining exactly what some of those details look like. Um, but a big component of it was we wanted to get to a place where I didn't have to trade time for money. Mm -hmm. um, and Rich Dad Poor Dad talks about that in, in his quadrants. Um, but it, it would free us up to to do a lot of different things with both our money, but especially our time, obviously, if we're not making that traditional exchange uh, of clocking it at a W-2 employer. Um, you know, I do work, as you mentioned, in a family business that I really enjoy. Uh, it's an industrial sales organization. Um, but, but even there, I am somewhat bound um, by the clock. Um, and real estate, uh, has the ability to give us the freedom uh, to really pick and choose and design our lifestyle. Um, and again, for us, it really comes back to the concept of stewardship. How can we be the best stewards of what we've been given? Um, you mentioned in the intro, we've got four daughters. Um, you know, raising them is a fairly full-time job for my wife, and I would love to be more involved in that um, and do things together as a family. Um, and I also just really, really enjoy real estate. I've, I've really taken to it uh, and, and enjoy the entire process. So, you know, I'd like to go into that first deal a little bit and just, you know, your confidence uh, of being able to, to do that right off the bat and, and where most people say, oh, you know, and I heard it getting started in the syndication business. I talked to try to find those people that are way ahead of me and, and try to network and connect and most of them 
you know, or, or especially at the local REI, I will say, uh, you know, wait, you know, wait a minute, you know, that's, um, uh, you know, most people start with that single family home and then they get a duplex and then they, you know, scale up from there. I heard that so many times, you know, and, but I, I was just like, nope, I'm not, okay, I, I'm not listening to that. You know, I'm going to pursue this thing, you know, the syndication thing that I'm starting to learn about. And, and I think we can scale a lot faster than that. And, and so, and, and you've done that, you know, as well. And so could you elaborate just on, you know, going into that first deal, uh, you know, as a, or this, this first deal through syndication and, and just how you had the confidence to do that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's a learning process. Um, and the first thing is identifying what you need to know. Um, there's a ton of moving parts in a syndication. Overall, syndication is not, it's not a terribly complex business, but there's a lot of aspects of it that you have to kind of have under your belt to execute a deal from start to finish. Um, and so after being exposed to the concept and generally knowing, um, the first Thing that came to the forefront is what I needed to do was start building relationship with brokers. Um, you know, the deal is all important. If you find a good deal, you know, the rest of it kind of falls into place, um, as it were. So, you know, starting to establish relationships with brokers, um, and then at the same time, also learning how to underwrite. Um, I kind of broke down the entire process um, into manageable chunks. What do I need to learn today? Um, that I can then go and implement as I'm trying to find a deal, as I'm trying to talk to brokers, as I am underwriting, knowing that I don't have to master the intricacies of the SEC law until we get a deal under contract. I don't need to learn everything there is to know about due diligence until we're under contract. Um, obviously, you need to have a little bit of a, a heads up. Not all that learning can be crammed into the first five days of contract. But generally, trying to space out and not, not trying to learn all of syndication at once um, but just starting with what we needed immediately and then growing from there. We hope that you have enjoyed the highlight show today. You can always listen to the full episodes that were featured today by clicking the links in the description box. Let us know in the comments what you thought of this episode, or you can go to lifebridgecapital.com forward slash podcast and click the feedback button. Let us know how we can add more value to you. Thank you and talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.